So now, in this video, we're going to look at the op amp as a comparator. So I have a fixed voltage to the inverting input right there. It's half of whatever the supply voltage it is. It doesn't matter what it is, but we're working with a significant amount of voltage here for uh, basic electronic components. 12 volts to 14.6 volts, which is a voltage range you can expect with lithium iron phosphate batteries. And also, if you're using a vehicle, to power a circuit uh, pretty much directly, you can expect a, a similar voltage range. But there we go, we go above halfway because I have half of the supply voltage set with those two 10K resistors. We get a high output, a red LED, which is not uh, very bright. So um, we will lower this uh, below halfway. Now we have a low output blue LED lights up. We'll explain why uh, coming up. But in case, that is with uh, 12 volts right there. I can uh, bump this up again to 14.6, uh, I think even 15 volts would be uh, fine, um, but 14.6 uh, is a good voltage to keep in mind because that's what lithium iron phosphate batteries, the 12 volt ones, they have a nominal voltage of 12.8 volts. You can give them some extra voltage though while they're charging to uh, completely pack them with uh, as much charge as they can store. So there you can see, now we got about uh, 9 milliamps of current. The amount of current's going to go up because we got a higher voltage, but when it comes to the uh, signal that it's comparing, it's half of whatever the supply voltage is. So we turn the trim pot above half of that, closer to the positive supply, then we have a high output. We drop below half, because that's what we set right there, half of the supply voltage, so set the trim pot below halfway down there, we got a low output. So now, we'll do a step-by-step -step build. The alligator clips are still attached, but I did turn the uh, power supply off. There you can see it's off. It's not uh, providing power, although it does give a slight negative voltage because of uh, some weird thing about this power supply. So maybe best idea to disconnect it completely. We have pin number eight up here. So it goes uh, one, two, three, four. That's the negative supply. Five, six, seven, eight. That's the positive supply. We have one op amp over here, and I think it's okay to leave these op amp floating. A lot of integrated circuits, the inputs need to have a uh, voltage applied to them, uh, positive or negative supply rail, if you're not using them, uh, but this does not seem to be that problem. So we have the other op amp over there. We have the output on top, the inverting input, the minus right there, the non-inverting input right there. So if you buy one of these kits, you will get uh, the pin layout uh, for it right there. So we got the output minus plus. Same over here, except for the power supply uh, voltage is on the opposite side right there. So positive, negative there. Um, so it's uh, down one spot. But otherwise, pin layout is the same as that one. Just shifted uh, down one spot. So that's how we uh, power the integrated uh, circuit. Let's get to the output. So again, we're working with uh, up to about 15 volts right here. So that's probably a good uh, voltage to take into account. We got a couple LEDs, blue LED and a red LED. So I'm gonna take the blue LED because that's highest up. And uh, yeah, that should be high enough uh, right there. So we're gonna connect the uh, cathode, the shorter lead down here to the anode of the red LED. The anode, the longer lead of the blue LED, we're gonna put up here and we're gonna use a 3K resistor. So we could use a lower value resistor, probably down to 1.5K, I'm guessing is about the minimum I wanna use. I made this diagram a long time ago and did the math. Um, but in case, uh, we're gonna keep the amount of current flowing through the blue LED lower because we already saw the blue LED, especially at 12 volts, uh, was brighter than the red LED in this particular circuit. And um, so, yeah, we actually have this uh, uh, basically wired the same. Doesn't matter which comes first, the resistor or the LED, as long as the LED is in the right direction. So the cathode to the output lights up when the output goes low ground. Anode is to the positive supply going through the resistor there, but it doesn't matter uh, which one comes first. Now, we're, gonna, we're not to the output yet. We'll uh, come to that. So we're gonna take the red LED um, right there and uh, Put the long lead, as I said before, the anode, to where the cathode, the blue LED is. Short lead, the cathode there, is going to head to ground through a 1,500 ohm resistor. And uh, we'll pluck that there. So, to connect it to the output, I, uh, you know, 
drop these gray jumpers somewhere they fall between something and uh, I'm a little short on them even though I have gray jumpers from two kits um, because I broke the container of one kit and uh, poured its jumpers into another one um, running low on those uh, gray jumpers so um, I got these black jumpers now kind of as substitutes they also jump over uh, the integrated circuits and stuff uh, pretty nicely and uh, whatnot I can kind of uh, you know push them together so this is 22 gauge uh, solid or I can stretch them out a little bit uh, to uh, change the distance that it covers so that's going to the top pin the output uh, right there uh, pretty straight forward now our reference voltage oh I do have the uh, pin layout on the sheet there I didn't realize that I got other stuff uh, written down too um, but we're not going to worry about that too much we're going to uh, focus on making this comparator circuit with uh, 12 volts so I had that covered earlier didn't realize I had that there um, so 10k resistor doesn't matter what the value resistors are we're working with a fair amount of voltage though um, but even with 5 volts a couple 10k resistors will be just fine we could use uh, any value uh, even 100k would uh, be okay but um, typically people write down 10k when they make the schematics or whatever um, so it's a good idea and I think that may be a bad spot this uh, resistor it's really not wanting to go in on that side right there so not sure if I damaged that at all but in any case pretty sure we got a pretty solid connection right there the other uh, 10k resistor going to the negative supply right there we're making a voltage uh, divider that is equal or half the uh, their equal value resistors so we'll get half of whatever the supply voltage is so the voltage at the inverting input is going to change as we change the supply voltage but as long as the supply voltage remains steady and we don't have any like spikes or something or, or drops because of sudden pulses or something uh, we'll have a steady uh, voltage at the inverting input if we do have a problem with like uh, spikes or uh, kind of dips when you got current demands or whatever we could take a capacitor and put it across the rail or even to the inverting input just something to be aware of if you are having problems now when it comes to the trim pot again it's one resistive element but there's a wiper so we have two equal value resistors here we could use a lower value on one side or a higher value or whatever to adjust the percentage of resistance and that will raise the uh, voltage to a percentage whatever the percentage is of the supply voltage from one resistor in relationship to the other here we just have one resistive element but there's a wiper that uh, connects to it and that wiper is the output basically so we can slide it up then we have what would be like a lower resistance on top and a higher resistance on bottom or we could sl slide it down and then we'll have what's equivalent to a higher resistance on top and a lower resistance on bottom the opposite of what I mentioned before so we can go down to no resistance on the low side and uh, all the resistance on the high side for zero volts and then all the way up if we have it set to 14.6 volts which we do um, we can set it all the way up to that right there and then halfway will be whatever half of the supply voltage is just like that one pretty straightforward um, so that's how the trim pot works when you use it as a voltage divider you do not need to use all three terminals of course you could just have uh, you know get rid of the positive side there just go to ground and then uh, whatever resistance coming down but that won't work for this input that input would just see ground no matter what um, but you can use it as a variable resistor just to get uh, you know 10,000 ohms or less these are not uh, real accurate though they're usually off by a fair amount um, probably a little bit more than 10,000 ohms but you know close so in any case that's going to the plus input which is below the uh, minus input there output uh, and then inverting input minus and then the plus the non-inverting input right there and that is it for wiring up it's a uh, pretty straightforward um, but again I'm intending these videos for uh, absolute beginners and I don't think I mentioned this but yeah I think uh, 1.5 K especially when we're getting close to 15 volts is the minimum resistance I would use with that much voltage protecting the red LED red LED does drop a couple volts in fact our output is probably going to come short of the uh, positive supply by I believe about a volt and a half if we're lucky as you demand more current it'll probably stray even further 
So even if we have 14.6, good chance, um, maybe it's only like 12.6 volts uh, coming out or something. Um, so there's other protection means in here, but you kind of want to calculate the bare minimum resistor you could use. We got uh, supply voltage minus two volts. The rest of the voltage will go across the resistor, assuming the output could give us that full voltage or whatever. But you know that should be the minimum resistor you use. Those extra protection will help. So not going to dwell on that. Hopefully that makes sense. But since we're working with up to like 15 volts, uh, 1.5k resistor for protecting a red LED is basically my minimum. So let's see if uh, we wired this properly. I hope so because I uh, filmed this all in one shot. And uh, so if I knew I made a mistake, I would have cut it there and reshot it and so on. So again, we got the power off, which you should do when you're wiring up the circuit and uh, you know, disconnecting it completely, not a bad idea either. So there we go. We got uh, six milliamps of current approximately. So the is accurate as a multimeter. Uh, going through the blue LED plus, there's also some of that current going through uh, those two resistors, that uh, trim pot right there, it's 10K right there. So twice as much as going through the trim pot as those, no current goes in or out of the inputs, something to be aware of. So that's not all the blue LED current, but blue LEDs are pretty bright, even at like two milliamps of current. And then about nine milliamps of current. Um, so whatever is uh, not going through the red LED, it's gonna go through those two resistors again. It's gonna be the same. In fact, um, I think uh, we pretty much covered everything. We can get an estimate. Again, it's not as accurate as a multimeter. Probably about two milliamps of current uh, going through these two sets of uh, resistors. Of course, again, we could do the math right there and uh, the blue one. So yeah, um, I'm guessing about three milliamps of current was all that was going through that uh, blue LED because there again, we got about two. And uh, it may go up a little bit as the components warm up and uh, so on, something. Um, components tend to conduct better, not always, but tend to conduct better as they warm up. Um, that's a thing to be aware of. There can be thermal runaway. If you try to max the current through something, maybe when it warms up it will conduct better and um, then you'll get more current than you expected when you already pushed it to its uh, max. So, kind of want to plan for worst case scenario. So there, again, we can go to uh, 12 volts or whatever. This would be basically about where you want to stop using a lithium iron phosphate battery at about 12 volts if it's a 12.8 volt uh, lithium iron phosphate uh, battery. Um, 10 volts is the danger point right there. Um, so just be aware of that. That would be uh, 2.5 volts per cell. You do not want to go uh, below that. Um, there's four cells, so uh, 10 volts. You definitely don't want to go below that. Good idea to stop at about 12 volts and then recharge it. When you're recharging it, you get to about 14.6. Uh, so again, really long video. Um, I intended this though for absolute uh, beginners. And uh, other than the first couple of minutes, I did this all in one shot and I think it worked out well. I don't think I made any mistakes. I may have though. So always be aware of that uh, when somebody's filming, uh, they tend to sometimes like say the wrong thing. I might, instead of say LED, if I was recently filling with the resistors, I might say resistors when I'm showing an LED and I meant to say LED or whatever. You know, that, that kind of stuff does happen. So always be aware of that. People kind of make mistakes when they're explaining stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, watch a whole bunch of videos and uh, learn it all as well as you can. And um, you'll catch those mistakes here and there. And, uh, you know, it's the way things are. So in any case, that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.